Hello, Canucks fans, and welcome back to another episode of the uh, Canucks Conversation, uh, brought to you by the great folks over at Montana's. My co-host uh, over there hasn't set up the third camera. Um, we you went give to, me a minute. We'll get back to it. We don't need the third camera. Yeah, You're we okay. do. We're already on. We're on. It's too late. It's too late to apologize. Uh, my name is Dave Gujali, joined as always by the man who built the place, Chris Faber. Our technical producer is Alex Allard, and as I said, we were at Montana's. He's probably pissed too. Alex is pissed. Montana's. We went to the our, our friends over at Montana's. We went to the Tawasin Mills location. Uh, it was beautiful. It's a it's a nice interior. It's a nice place to be. Yeah, like the view here too. You cut cut to it, Alex. Look at this. This is beautiful beautiful view today. I like the cloudy days. I don't like them to be too sunny. I like a little bit of cloud behind it. Anyways, these are the days you look out here. You say, what a beautiful view outside uh, Vancouver. Just gorgeous. Uh, anyways, Montana's is bringing back the viewing. Party. And there's those, that's a DHL van down there. They, you know, how long these DHL people take to deliver something. And there goes, oh any, my gosh, any potential sponsorship. Two to four weeks, they say, I see, I see in two to four months, these DHL <laughs> folks, I tell, all they can do is deliver rugby balls. And there goes uh, any potential sponsorship we had with DHL. I don't want to. Uh, but know. one place well, we are enough problems with them. partnered with and proud to be partnered with is Montana's. Montana's is bringing back the viewing party. They've got daily deals with their new comfort menu. Uh, we checked it out yesterday. Monday is half-price wings. Tuesday, it's those $5 tacos. Uh, Wednesday, all you can eat ribs. And we Thursday and every day, uh, drink specials over at Montana. Seven locations throughout British Columbia, Fort St. John, Kelowna, Langley, Nanaimo, Prince George, Tawasin, and of course, Victoria, yesterday, we got the creamy mac and cheese, the spin dip, and... We basically sat down there. They brought us the comfort menu. They said, what do you want? They basically brought it all out. Everything twice. Everything. It was awesome. We got all the tacos, too. Lisa wants a... Uh, I see in the chat here, wants a review of the tacos. Can we get the tacos up? We got a couple different taco photos, I think, for the YouTube folks here. There's quads holding it happy as all heck. There was one picture I didn't want to include because he was... Uh, it was a weird stare you had on those tacos, but they were, they were put big. it on. It was a good one. Look at the size of them. They, they are even, you know, they were hefty. I, that's all I really had was a taco and then a little bit of everything you else. You had the shrimp one. I had the beef. Oh. I really liked the beef. Yeah. Well, I, I'm a shrimp guy. So having that in the middle yeah. and the, you know what the, the, the kicker is, I didn't even see this in the original photo we had. It's the tortilla chips on top. Mm -hmm. Just that little very crunch, nice. right? Yeah. Good very stuff. nice. And they were great to us. We love those folks. People out there. in the chat are pointing out that I'm wearing a San Diego Padres hat today. Yep. I'm very excited. February 24th. Uh, the pitchers and catchers, yeah. No, February 24th is the first preseason game between the Mariners oh, wow. and the Padres at 10 a.m., two of my favorite where, teams. Where are they playing? Down in... Uh, Ar Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. Arizona is uh, the NL. No, that's not how it works. Yeah. Ar no, Arizona is... No, wait. It's not NLAL. I can't remember how they split it. I just know the Jays are in Florida. Uh, the Padres and Mariners are both in Arizona. I went but down to uh, spring Mariners training one time AL. myself. I was down. Uh, they were playing at Arizona University. Do you know what I'd like to do? Down there is excellent. You don't give it. You don't no, give no, no. Because I'm going off of your point. Okay. I'd like to do a little Canucks convo. Makes a trip down to the MLB All Star Game, three hours away this summer. I got my passport now. Yeah, you got your passport. We're all staying at Lisa's. Yeah. She's got room. We should absolutely do that. Bring we your tents, for Lisa. We're coming go. into the backyard. Everyone's bringing a tent. Okay. But Claude uh, doesn't know he's never been camping before. That's the closest he'll come to camping. Whatever. Tent in a backyard. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving right, right on. We're excited no, for the, baseball season. No, but that Montana's season. last, I tell you, quickly, it was excellent. Man. And they treat us so good out there. Mm -hmm. Shout out to, uh, to John. John. John was incredible dealing with them. And uh, three people showed up as well. Yeah, showed up. Laura, showed Joey. Up. We'll talk about Joey after. Yeah. Um, Scooter as well. That's a Twitter yes. name. All, all three of them. I've heard follow Scooter. Anyways, okay. I did. Uh, That's my rule. If I meet you in person, I got to follow you back on Twitter because yeah. I know you're a real person. Yes. Great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and no, uh, there's some drama we got to get to, too. This was, this is you and the people up at the top here. Okay. No, sorry. Do your gift card. Do your well, gift I was going to say you got to do it, but okay, I'll do oh, it. Oh, no, I'll do it. Yeah. Right now, uh, pin tweet or pinned, uh, what do you call it? A pinned pin in, post. Pinned Insta on uh, a Pinsta on, uh, on Instagram. Who win $50 gift card uh, at Montana's? Get it in there. We'll tell you. And we're going to say who's going to win on Friday, right? We say it on the show? Yeah. Cool. We'll let you know on Friday. You know who's, you know who's entered a whole bunch? And this might be against her. Because I don't pick the winner, okay? But my mom entered last night. She, Hell yeah. She's on the Instagram. Not often. But she entered last night. So Is she in liking the, the graphics on the Instagram? She loves the graphics. Yeah. Awesome. Everybody loves the graphics. New Canucks Army graphics are great. Just patting myself on the back a little bit. Okay. But first, now that we got that out of the way, all the good folks in Montana's over there. You try. This is you and the people up at the top of Nation Network. Set up this thing.
where we're going to take a day off on Tuesday to go do our stuff with Montana's film, a lot of great content, all this stuff. But it was a lot of people mentioned this to me online. They said, it's because you're trying to get away from your spelling of quadrelli of your Twitter name and the drama behind the, the capital I and the L here. Oh yeah. Of your Twitter account. Was... There it is <laughs> for fraudrelli. <laughs> Now you can see with the new Twitter look, font what's look, going on there. I'm you lost never, it. I'm in a never-ending battle with Enrique Quadrelli, right. who's a guy from Argentina who hasn't used his Twitter account since 2013. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've sent out the troops before. Yep. I've said to people, go report this account. This guy doesn't use his account. And they actually had a program coming to Twitter years ago, a couple years ago, where they said, we're going to be deactivating all the old accounts. But then they realized, they're like, well, people who have passed away... Right. We don't want to just get rid of any yep. memory of, you know, for their loved ones. So, um, you know, it made sense that they didn't do that. But I got to be honest, for selfish re reasons, I was a little upset because I was going to, you know, I don't want to make it too big of a fuss of this because there's going to be some jokester out there that goes and swipes it as soon as Enrique gets banned and swipes the Quadrelli at. Then I'll have to change it for sure. I'm probably going to change it, to be honest, but I I've just built the brand. And you know what? I got to be honest with you. It only looks like this, I think, on Android, right? Oh, okay. Like I, I so don't who's see using this an online. Android? Okay, then Greg, who's using Android? Greg anyway. Balak. Yeah, Balak does have a, an Android. Yeah, of course he does. I um, go on Halford and Ruff this morning, and Balak hops in to ask a question. What do you think it's about? The backup goaltending situation in the AHL. <laughs> I got my... Um, they just made a signing. Yeah, they did. I got my um, uh, my account, because I want at Chris Faber 39 too. This is what's going on here. Look at this. He's, it's Chris Faber hasn't tweeted. At Chris Faber hasn't tweeted since... April 8th, 2009, and he says, getting ready for a long weekend. And you said... That's his last tweet. And you said... I, I didn't say that. It's just in the... It's one and, of those and things... And for those you, on the podcast, typed out from Chris's account is Frick, yeah. your long weekend. Yeah, exactly. So that's uh, that's the account that I want. <laughs> yeah, we're in, a, we're in a hunt. Okay, uh, we should get this in quickly before we get to the other stuff. Sure. Uh, the Abbotsford Canucks have signed goaltender Rylan Parento to a PTO. I actually like this signing. I do. What? And Woodley was pointing it out. This guy's a human highlight reel. Oh, gosh. You got one highlight last week. It's not a human highlight reel. <laughs> Look, if, if Yaro Askarov is going to get all this uh, oh, acclaim good, because though. he makes some highlight reel saves. Goalie of the month in the has, NHL. Two yeah, months in a row. Yeah. Um, if he's going to get all that uh, that acclaim, Parento deserves the same uh, same level. All right. Whatever Not you actually. say. But uh, I, I mean, am excited to watch him play. It's just somebody asked me about this today. Well, when I was answering Greg's question, here's what's going on in the AHL backups. Just to, what a way to start the show. We got a lot of stuff to get to. But the AHL backup situation, they're going to sign these guys to these 10 game PTOs, right? Or these 15, I forget what it is, 10 or 15 game PTOs that you sign in the AHL. And then you either need to actually sign a contract with the AHL team or you just get released. So, uh, with Abbotsford's situation, they're not going to, unless they find a guy they really like and want to keep him around as the third goalie, they're just going to keep signing these PTO guys. I mean, the Jake Kupski was ECHL goalie of the month, had a great month, like a, a sub two goals against average in the ECHL. Very impressive. Came in and, and you know, struggled a little bit. It was tough for him in the AHL. It's a huge jump. So someone messaged they'll keep me, doing that for Someone a messaged later. me about the signing said, do you think this is because they're trading Demko? And I said, oh gosh, no. And no, then they can't, not. that's the thing with these PTOs in the AHL, you can't, like just keep giving a guy 15 days or 15 games so like once you sign him you have to sign a different one but then you can go back to the other guy so you might see what's this new guy's name here i don't even know i didn't see rylan parento so parento and cupski they might be kind of bouncing in between with uh, the outsider canucks that's how i see it playing out. okay until demko gets back then you get delia back down there uh, or maybe martin keeping it right on the goaltending uh stuff we have we don't have the goalie music anymore the intro the intro mm. for me I, i'm gonna go off a little bit on goaltending not too much it's more so updates thatcher demko skated uh i believe it was 10 minutes he was taking light shots i think that's what murph said um yesterday in new york canucks are obviously in new york to play the rangers tonight the islanders tomorrow but uh, Demko back on the ice, taking shots. It, it, part of a practice, you saw it on the Canucks Twitter account. They posted a video of him moving in the crease. And I think, honestly, that was the big thing for me, at least, was seeing him just kind of move in the crease. And you could see, like, you know, he's not hitting that post as hard as he normally would. And obviously, he's not going to, you know, be in game shape right now. I think it's still about a week away for Demko. But uh, good to see the Canucks starter back on the ice. Again, like, a lot, lot of trade speculation, all that sort of stuff. I'll tell you one thing, Chris. He ain't going anywhere if he plays one game before the deadline and mm -hmm. does okay. Even no matter how he does, if he plays one game before the deadline, nobody's trading for him. 
I mean, they might, but you're not getting what you'd like. 40, 42 at that point, the Canucks shadow. shouldn't even be looking at moving him, we'll I don't think. Put up a hell of a night. No, he's getting traded. He's good. We'll see what will happen. The Cody Severson comes in the chat. I actually read his chat here. I got him muted most of the time. But uh, this one, he says, uh, it's because Kupski got injured. That's right. Pod Colson skated into him. But Kupski was getting near the end of those games played things. So don't, I, I'm still right in the end, I think. So Corey Anderson said, good Lord, Quads guy makes one save and he's the, he's the second coming of Dominic Cassidy. Yeah, exactly. Lisa <laughs> says we're good for the backyard uh, tents, it looks like. So we'll uh, we'll have to see there. And people are asking about my energy drink as well. This, today's a good one because who did I talk to this morning? People. One person asks about your Everybody's energy Everybody's asking about it. The uh, Swedish fish energy drink today. No, And five calories. So I don't know how they do it. Okay. I don't know how. Uh, Brock Besser, Luke Shen. That's the first thing on the agenda today. Uh, ben Hankinson, the agent for these two gentlemen, yesterday told Post Media's Ben Kuzma that he has talked to the Minnesota Wild and the New Jersey Devils about a trade uh, for his client, Brock Besser. Um, a few months ago, it was reported, I believe Friedman was the one that had it, um, that Besser's agent was given permission by the Canucks to help facilitate a trade. Um, Hankinson spoke on Donnie and Dolly today with Don Taylor, Rick Dollywall, and he spoke about, you know, it's a hard position for him to be in in general. Cause you know, he didn't outwardly admit like, yeah, I'm doing this. He just said, it's a hard position because there's a lot involved. Uh, you know, there's salary cap, there's all that sort of stuff involved. It's not as simple as saying, Oh, these guys like him. Here you go. I did my part. There's a lot more, uh, that the management team obviously has to take into account and take into consideration. So that's the latest on, uh, Brock Besser. Yeah, interesting to hear some of the comments from. Can I just uh, ask you a question flat out? Jeez, man, you are. Sorry, I'm fired up today. Yeah. Can I ask you a question flat out? Yep. Do you think Brock Bester's here after the deadline? Like in your heart of hearts, dig deep. Yes. Yeah, I think he's here after. You think he's here after the deadline? Yep. I think he's moved. I think it's going to be easier for unless the team that like he's interested in, the agent's interested in, and that team's interested in making a move for him. I, I don't. I don't think it happens until the off season, but it, it like the Canucks have a chance to retain here and maybe get some sort of an asset back, but I don't think it happens before the deadline. What are we three weeks away? Right. This yep. has been a conversation that feels like it's kind of been you know simmering in the background for the last I don't know how many months here since the season almost started. It felt like yep, or at least when the season really fell off a cliff early on. But yeah, I I think he's going to benefit from from a change of scenery. And wish him nothing but success in the end. And, and you know, Hankinson talked about it today uh, when he was on Donnie and Dolly, just saying, like, you know, he could be scoring hundreds more goals for the Vancouver Canucks. That might be the way that it works out. I think uh, there's a lot of things that are fluid over the next uh, few months here anyways, up until, really until, like, the the draft and free agency. Like, I think there's going to be a lot of changes here. I, I hope there is. I hope that there's a lot of changes to set this organization up for a better, better future. And, um, and I hope Bo Horva has – or, sorry – Brock Besser has success wherever he ends up going, or if he stays. Well, Either Horvath's, way, it's nothing but success. Well, Horvat scored his first. Well, goal he's on my mind. Here. I got the Horvat stuff later. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a beauty goal. We'll get to it uh, afterwards. But another guy who could be with the Canucks quickly for a bit though, longer. on the Besser thing because this has come up. Like Sarah Valley's been talking about this. He thinks Besser's the next to go off the. Yeah, Canucks here ahead and, of Luke Shen. Yeah, and Alex, you can get this up here. The Besser's last five years. Like you look at the production he's had, and yeah, he's missed some games. He hasn't played an eighty-two game season, but really strong numbers from what he's putting up. And even this season, right? Like 30 points. He's only got the nine goals, but coming off of a wrist injury where it felt like, uh, and his agent Max mentioned this, that yeah, maybe a little bit rushed back this season. He really wanted to be there and at the start of the season for the Vancouver Canucks, but you know, consistently putting up 20 goals when he's playing and at the pace really to be 30, if he's healthy for the whole season. But the question is, can he be healthy for a full season? Um, but you see the numbers and you see the contract and it doesn't, it's not too far off that it's like a very big negative value asset. It's just you just you expect a little more when you're making six point six five, right? And you have two more years of that coming in, uh, but it's a difficult spot. But twenty five years old, I, I I've been saying it for a long time on the show. I do think Brock Besser is going to bounce back, whether it's here or somewhere else. That I don't know, but I think he's going to bounce back. I, I think he's got the skill when he's fully healthy and able to come back and get into his own and, and also maybe play with Pedersen or JT Miller and actually be in a spot where he's putting up offense, get time on the first power play unit. Like he does, he's not getting any of that anymore, right? Like when he was putting up these seasons of, you know, 26 goals and 69 games, he was in a nice spot with the team. He was able to play in the top line. He was able to be the power play guy shooting the puck. And in those spots, you, you want Brock Besser to kind of be there. And I, I, that's, I've said it for a while. I think there's contending teams that would put him in that position. It's, it's interesting for the Canucks to have him in a third line role with Sheldon Dries as a centerman. 
just it's not a great spot, right? So th- this is this is where I start to have doubts in the idea of okay, well, yeah, he'll be traded before the deadline because you're looking at what they're doing with a guy like Connor Garland, where Garland's playing well under Tockett. Now it's four games. We said it after yep. three. We'll see if it's another one and how long this goes on for. But are you building up Connor Garland's trade value or are you bringing, building up Brock Besser's trade value? Because yeah. I'm not convinced that, you know, that a team is just – because I know you pointed at the production just there, but I'm not convinced a team's going to say, yeah, this is an asset we'd like to acquire for and give up assets in order to get. Like, I don't think – Not at 6.65. Be- yeah, and I mean, you're going to either have to retain or you're going to have to take something bad back. Here's the thing about retaining on Besser too, right? If you're retaining money on Brock Besser, like I look at that, say you do, right, to move on from him and get assets back. Because you can get assets back if you retain a certain amount with Besser, I think, right? Besser at yeah. $4 million, people would be lining up to take him at that. You take half of it, people are, you know, there's a lineup going around the corner like the the old Apple store when they would open. But with Brock Besser, like if you do retain his deal and send him off, is that not the most 100% contradictory thing to Andre Kuzmenko and the signing that you just made? Because now you're giving dead money to a winger to look and build for the future with an asset. You're also paying a winger a lot of money to be here for the next two years. So it's like, that's why it's going to be difficult because I don't know if the Canucks want to retain on him because then you're adding money. Like the Canucks already have enough money thrown into their wings imagine throwing dead money into a winger that you traded like that's just another pit of where this money is disappearing into the wings and that's the interesting thing for me and that's what i think the canucks are at right now is they probably don't want to retain it feels like a matt dumba trade just has to happen right yeah man. like it feels like that he's up after this year too so like he's got to get a new contract anyways but even at like and that's the thing i don't think that he's going to be coming in to just like play out the season then go go elsewhere so it, it's a difficult spot it's a difficult spot because of the money and the situation so lots to uh lots to discuss on Brock Besser as we move forward here but I don't think he gets dealt by the deadline I think that if he does it's it's an off-season thing yeah okay we'll see we'll see what happens uh Luke Shen another guy um you want to break down his comments Hankinson's comments yeah so the interesting thing like okay Shen's making eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year he's on an expiring deal he's the per- he's the perfect uh rental for someone right like could you ask for a better guy in the room no like you, you could, but you won't find one. Luke Shen's the best guy to have in a hockey locker room. I think he's incredible in there. I think he's the perfect leader. He's the perfect guy. He probably blends in with a lot of different folks. He's, I don't know, you know, he's in the Shen family, right? So like you kind of know the Shen family knows a lot of people uh, in the NHL. So he's the perfect ad for somebody, any team. That's the thing with Besser. Like there's, there's certain teams that Besser fits with moving forward. With with Luke Shen, he makes sense on any team that's in the top twenty of the NHL right now that wants to make a push for the playoffs and wants to go on a playoff run and have some some added depth to their defense score. So that's what's interesting to me is if you have twenty teams that could be interested, you should be able to drive up that value to a second round pick, right? Like the the conversation is okay, it's it's fine if you get a third, it's good if you get a second, it's incredible if you get a first. There's got to be enough teams in there to bump that third up to a second. That's just the way I look at it, and I think the Canucks need to move on from Shen. But circle back, like Ben Hankinson, his agent said, is like, that could be something that's explored this summer. Absolutely. Like Shen's very comfortable with the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, you know, he's obviously in Kelowna during the off seasons, has a good crew over there, is, can be looked at as a potential leader for this Canucks team down the road. What an like, interesting I, comment that he made, though. Like, like you, were, you just alluded to it. I want to read it. Yeah, okay? go for it. Uh, so he, he was talking about Shen, obviously, like we just said. And, you know, he said the ultimate possibility, and I should add, you know, I'm going to read full context, okay? Uh, again, this from Donnie and Dolly, uh, check TV, go check them out. Um, this, is, this is what he said, is there's a lot of factors in play, but it's ultimately a situation where I think the Canucks management has to figure out this is a good return we could get. And they're almost crazy not to take it because the Canucks aren't in the playoffs. They can trade them and get some value to help build and move in the direction they want to go. The ultimate possibility is he could re-sign with the Canucks next summer. He's from Kelowna. He's got a family out there. He loves it out there. And I think if you ask the players in the room, they don't want to trade Luke Shen. That's his agent saying that. That's not just us on the, uh, you know, the whole, oh, the Canucks could trade Kuzmenko and then he'll probably re-sign here. That was the agent, man. That was the agent saying that. You know what the agent, DC, also mentioned, Ben, he talked to uh, Patrick Alvin this morning. So, like, this, you know, a lot of fresh, uh, fresh information here, so. I think it's going to be interesting to play out with Shen. I, 
that's the thing. I think they can benefit from trading him and, you know, getting something for your future and then circling back in the summer because I think the Canucks will offer him, what, like 1.5? four to 1.8 million on a two-year deal Mm -hmm. i mean is that the worst thing for the canucks moving forward like if you're going to pay some money to someone make it the guys that you really like in your room because that's a huge thing for the canucks in there what i think like when we talk about the retool and the rebuild make that room get retooled and rebuilt right like and start with luke shen being a guy that you could keep around in the summer but know that you need to also rebuild and retool for the future with actual assets and i think that's why the draft pick is still important and then if you can get him in the offseason great but you know, priority one should be to really build for the future and, and utilize what you have for a draft chip and turn them into an asset. Draft picks are king. Like we, we keep talking about it. I don't want to say the name Kirby Doc again on this show oh, and bring no up more that Montreal, whole thing. Yeah. But like draft picks are king. Right now, especially in a flat cap world, draft picks are the most valuable asset that a team can get. Again, uh, Noah wrote a fantastic, Noah String wrote a fantastic article over at CanucksArmy.com about this. Uh, just about how, you know what, that's what you should be trying to acquire. Enough of this, you know, we want this young player. We want this. We want this. We want uh, another Jack Sadnika. Mm. Like, no disrespect to Sadnika, but a, f- a third round pick is probably more valuable to you than Jack Sadnika is, or a fourth or fifth, whatever. Yeah. I, I don't care what it is. Anyways, okay. Um, You've got some stuff. Oh, yeah. On Jonathan LeCaramacchi and Elias Pettersson, who you talked to at length today. Uh, of course, we're talking about defenseman Elias Pettersson. And uh, he's a good talker, you said. Yeah. Who do you want first? Uh, not, uh, let's let's start with Lakaramaki because obviously okay. he has the broken foot out for the rest of his season. A tough season just got tougher for oh. Lakaramaki. I would say this is a horrible draft plus one year for Lakaramaki by all considerations. Like he goes in to the World Juniors, becomes the thirteenth forward for Team Sweden based on his own performance. Gets mono in March. What else happened to him? Help me out here. Concussion. Concussion. He's what else? Foot injury to end the season. Now, now. yeah, foot injury exactly. Um, yeah, two World Juniors, right? Not very, very disappointing uh, so, first season after yeah, his draft year. Three goals and six assists in 29 games. Actually, only two goals. One, they count shootout goals over there for a goal. So he only scored two goals in 29 games. Yeah. So LeCarrie Mackey, his foot injury happened during practice on uh, Tuesday, Tuesday morning. Uh, I touched, I quickly had a chat with him this morning. Just uh, we're checking in and see how he's doing. He's uh, hoping for a speedy recovery. Uh, and but is pretty let down uh, that he won't be able to finish the season, right? Because eight weeks from now, there will not be an Alsvenskan season. There will be the last little bit of the Alsvenskan playoffs. I don't think uh, Jurgarden's going to be making that run. Uh, I think that's an unfortunate spot for Lekaramaki, and it's a very tough season, right? You 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 said it. it's been a horrible season for him. That's you know you can sugarcoat it if you want, but it's going to be very hard because you can't really sugarcoat what's happened so far this year. Lekaramaki's number two in our rankings. Okay, so you can see the article up here on Canucks Army. I talked about it quite a bit um, in the article. I spent a lot of time discussing the future of Jonathan LeCaramacchi. Here's the thing about LeCaramacchi's future. There's a massive interrobang about uh, where he will play next season. Lots of different options. Al Svenskin, SHL, WHL, OHL, QMJHL, AHL. This dude can play everywhere around the world, okay? It's very... It's very crucial to me that the Vancouver Canucks step in to help with development. Like they need to have a conversation and multiple conversations and really, uh, I don't want to say a tough conversation, but a very pointed conversation about the development of this kid to get into the NHL one day. And you look at what happened with him with Jurgarden, where he's been comfortable. He's been there for the last four years with that organization. He's grown through the U16, U18, U20, up to the Al Sven- or up to the SHL last year, down to the Al Svenskan this year. He's grown with that organization for a long time. He's very comfortable there. He lives with his parents in his hometown playing in playing with Jurgarden. So it's like a, it's a very comfortable spot for him, but looking at him in the most comfortable spot this year didn't work out, right? It just it didn't happen to work out this season for LeCarrie Mackey and that makes it very difficult because like now you almost need to push him out of that comfort zone a little bit and get him into a spot where it's 100% focused on seeing how he develops in a different kind of change of scenery, right? Like he needs to either be in the AHL. He either needs to be in in one of the CHL leagues. Those situations, I think, need to be pushed a little bit of like, hey, get back to the CHL, whether, you know, because he's going to be people that saying like he should go to the Giants. Sure, but the Giants would now need to draft him in the import draft because they lost his rights. So now it's going to be he's going to re-enter the CHL import draft. Anybody from the Q, O, or Dub, they can all draft him now. And wherever team drafts him, like 
man, like look at what's going on with like the Seattle Thunderbirds and Lisa will like this, but like what the Seattle Thunderbirds have just done into the WHL is like make trades, do a heck of a job in the CHL import draft. And now they have so much talent going into what this season is. I have to think that is a prime spot for all the players that are developing on that team. Like the high end first round picks. I think they have five of them five first round picks or something like that. And they're all playing together about to go on a deep WHL run. NHL That's, first round picks. What yeah. you mean? Yeah. So they're going on a deep WHL run in the playoffs. They're likely to win the WHL the way that they're looking like right now. They're going to go to the Memorial cup. Does that not sound incredible for someone like LeCarrie Mackey who just came off of a season where he couldn't produce in the Al Svenskin. He didn't have a good world juniors. He could roll into next year's world juniors with like, 15 goals in 25 games in, in the dub or even more than that, right? Like he could be scoring more than that. He'd have some confidence. He'd be scoring goals and it would be an incredible situation for him to build this confidence that looks like it's completely lost this year, right? Like what you could, and I'm just like, I'm just reading the situation here of like, how difficult would it be to gain confidence with the year that he's had, right? Like he's been given opportunity after opportunity and it just hasn't been able to click. I think that part of his game needs to be the thing that's focused on for development over the next 12 months is confidence, man. Get the confidence back in this kid's game because he's, I'll flat out say it, like LeCarrie Mackey's not going to be a good NHL player if he's not confident in his own game. He needs to be confident. He needs to think, I can beat a goaltender with my shot. My one-timer is really good. I want to take it on the power play. And if he doesn't have any confidence, he's never going to be able to do any of this stuff. So, like, he needs to be confident, and I think coming to the CHL next year, though it's going to be uncomfortable for him, he's going to have to adjust. He's going to have to learn what it's like to live in North America. It's going to help so much more in the long term if he can build his confidence back up right now, get to the AHL the year after that, and then just see where it goes from there. Like, that's what I think has to happen because I don't – if he goes back to El Svenskin and has another bad season, you're talking about a lost prospect. I think if he goes back for another year and, and like you're talking about a lost prospect with a high draft pick that you spent on him. So uh, Corey in the chat brought it up and I'm sure this will be a question of many podcast listeners as well. How much of this season was just a factor of he got all these injuries, you know, mono concussion uh, and the broken foot, like moving away, isn't going to change any of that. Or are you talking about when he was playing that he was just not able to compete at the El Svenskin level? That's a, that's, that's an issue in its own right, I guess. Right. Like, this injuries. was, you know, yeah, yeah, like this was the first, this was the first time he had a concussion. First time he's had a major foot injury. Those are some freak injuries, right? Like in practice, you, you skate into, you know, you go flying to the board, you hurt your foot, you're out for eight weeks. That's, that's very freak injury. So I think that part, yes, you have to look at that and say there was definitely some roadblocks that like, I'm, I'm saying all these roadblocks, like aren't 100% put in front of them, but there were some roadblocks, I think that were placed in there because of his play, right? Like you, if you're not scoring the Elsvenskin while you're getting first line minutes, is that on the mono that you had in March? Uh, he didn't want to make that excuse when I talked to him. He said two months he couldn't work out, but then he spent a lot of summer kind of flying around. But what I just heard from him was like, last week he's telling me that he's excited for the step forward and the move forward and everything. So like he's feeling good again. Then this injury obviously is, is horrible timing because he was starting to feel good about himself. I just, I just, I find it difficult because I've seen the way that he plays and I've seen the way that he looks in the Al Svenskin. And it's hard for him to be confident. It's hard for him to be confident if he's not scoring. And I think if he's scoring here in, in the CHL or even the eight, like the AHL is interesting. Cause it's like, I'd, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see him down in there. Now it's for, and this is happening more and more uh, kind of over the past couple of years here with some new transfer agreements through, uh, through European hockey and the, and the NHL really, but you know, through the AHL, you can see 19 year olds in the AHL and it's, they're playing every night. They're normally not playing a lot of minutes. Some of them get sent down to the CHL, you know, midpoint of the season. Uh, so, like, there, there's a lot of options. I just hope that they're all explored with LeCarrie Mackey. And I, I hope it's not just like, hey, I'm really comfortable in Sweden. I like it here. Blah, blah, blah. My family's here. That's all, like, great and stuff for him to be comfortable. But how many years do you just let him stay comfortable before challenging him a little bit to like get this North American hockey mindset in your mind of not playing the game specifically, but like living in North America and playing hockey. And he's 18 years old. He's still super young. I just, I wonder what the Canucks want for this next 12, like 12 months with him. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see, obviously he's got to recover first. Uh, L Jim saying that he was playing the last five, six games before he got injured on the first line and he scored yeah. a couple goals. So, Hey, 
Well, there's also no, the he option. scored one goal and it was a shootout. So like he didn't score in a game. All right, was... Jim. Jim L. Jim's just lying in the chat. Then. No, L. Jim's right. I mean, he scored a goal. It was in a shootout, but. Well, that's not a couple of goals. A couple indicates more than one. Mm, that's right. In he scored coming two. back, I think, from um, from the uh, right from the World Juniors, and it was like nice. He got all excited about. It. I'm still excited. I think there's a lot of skill. Like, I think there's so much skill in this game. It's just not about his skill. It's about being able to utilize his skill. Like he needs to be able to be confident and be shooting and doing all these things. So I, I just look at confidence being the thing he needs right now the most. Let's get to DPD. Okay, DPD. Let's go. Oh. My nose is so itchy. I don't know why. Is it? Yeah, rubbing yeah. it on camera. Okay, right. go. Let's I had go. a snot bubble last week. Hopefully no one clipped On that. camera? Yeah. Oh, geez. No, I, I, I would have like told that. you. I would have pointed it out. No, I didn't like that. <laughs> okay, go. So, uh, all right, DPD. Let's pull up the quote here, Alex, uh, on DPD, talking about being tough. Look at this. This is, a st- I tell you, I, oh, I had a great chat with uh, with Elias Pettersson this morning. And I loved this one. I want to read this quote. This is what Pettersson said when I asked him about, like, being a tough defenseman and playing defensive in his own zone. He said, I like the tough game, but I'm not playing to search for hits. But when hits come, I try to hit hard, and I just try to be a solid defensive D-man. If someone touches our goalie, we need to stand up and do something. Later on, or kind of the way that quote kept going, too, was, like, he likes to really be trusted by not only his coaches from the way that he's playing defense, but he likes to be trusted by his teammates that he's the guy who's going to step up and back up his guys. When a player gets hit, and, like, that's what you see, right? Like, you see Pedersen... And you see the Swedish guy who skates so well, but he's got this tough kind of mean streak in him. He doesn't like when goals, like when players are around his goaltender after the whistle. He pushes every single guy out of the way when that happens. And I just had a great chat with him today. I thought it was excellent. Um, oh, he talked about the nicknames too. So EP2 is his favorite. He says he also likes DPD, and that's the one he sees the most. So I guess he's seeing my tweets. Uh, and he had a really good laugh when I told him repeat. He liked that one a lot too. So great chat with him. Uh, have a lot more of that coming to Canucks Army tomorrow because Elias Pettersson is our number one ranked prospect in the system with Lakara Mackey coming in at number two. Atu Ratu, we're still uh, we're still evaluating him, but we'll see where he goes. He might hop up to number one. He might be number two. Might be number three. We gotta figure that one out. But that's uh, that's the piece. Of, can, we talked about the last game. This is the thing about uh, DPD for me is he's played so many minutes. Can we get the the stats up, Alex, of uh, of his last? It's this is all his last games in the SHL uh, and in the J20 league. He played a ton, scored a bunch. But even the World Juniors, right? You're looking at 16 minutes, 20 minutes, 18 minutes, 17 minutes, 15 minutes, 19 minutes, 17 minutes, consistently playing a lot. And he talked about his role for Sweden at the World Juniors when I was chatting with him this morning. And his role was just to be a guy who kills penalties and was, is relied upon to be a defensive defenseman. And I, I had to ask him about that because in J20, he's an offensive guy. In the SHL, they kind of don't really need him just to be defensive. They want him to do a little bit of both. So he's kind of had an experience of being an offensive guy, being a defensive guy, being a two-way defenseman. I love that. Like, I love the way that that Elias Pettersson's development is going with his SHL team. The fact that they're giving him 16 minutes a night uh, in the SHL, like, it's that's really good for a guy who's 18. He turns uh, 19 next week. So a lot of really good stuff coming out from him. He wants to bring a little bit more offense at the SHL, he said, but he's really feeling good about his defensive play. You look over the last three games, he's a plus four. Say what you want about plus minus, plus four over your last three games is solid. Uh, he's getting those shots on net as well. Like I, I just, I really think he's developing into something really impressive, uh, specifically for a third round pick. Like he is, you know, you draft again, you do that draft today and Pedersen's not going, he's not going in the third round. He's going much higher than that from everything that he's done since the draft. So, Really good uh, good chat with him. We'll have more of that uh, on Canucks Army tomorrow. It's going to be good. Uh, we're going to have the Lakir Mackey one running today, this afternoon. That's I'm coming up here. going to be quick. editing it after this show. Uh, okay, now's my time to shine. I- I'll let you talk for a while there. I, I kind of noticed I haven't talked much this show after starting it, doing not all the talking. Yeah, you're texting on the last 20 talk. minutes. I just like, gave you kind of free reign here, but I- I'm back. I-, I got something to say here. Okay. Last night, yep. I don't know if we have a clip of this because I don't do show prep, no. but Bo Horvat. Scores his first goal as an Islander. I will describe the play because, Chris, it is ingrained in my memory already. Matt Barzell works hard to win the puck back in the corner. Matt, Ball- Matt Barzell, former Coquitlam Express. Yep. I think he played one game for the team, but he's oh. from Coquitlam. Um, <laughs> sauces the puck over to Horvat. And, hey, like, Horvat basically hit this puck out of the air. If you, I'm sure you've watched the goal by yep. now. He basically hits the puck out of the air and just deposits it top shelf. And for those that haven't seen the goal, 
It's all over Twitter. It's also on CanucksArmy.com. We got yeah. a write-up on it, so if you go check it out. I got the uh, clip of uh, of the chant. You want to hear the Horvat chant? Let's from... hear the Horvat chant yeah. because uh, let, in a second here, because uh, after this goal, Horvat's 32nd of the season, which, by the way, breaks his career high oh. that he set last season. Does with it 31. in an Islanders jersey. Yeah, he's done it in an Islanders jersey. I think, what is this, 51 games for him? He scores his 32nd goal of the year. Guy's well on his way, and hey, uh, the, the fans had some love for Bo after the game and during the game, right after the goal, this is what could be heard on the broadcast and in the UBS arena uh, on Long Island. Well, a standing ovation for Bo Horvat. His first game as an Islander. What's the chant here, guys? We need to work on that. As the guy said, we'll work on that. That is uh, basic. How how would you chant that? Like, I mean, it's never been done here. Canucks fans have never bothered. What like what would you do? I don't know. Like, I don't think there was. I don't think it was the worst one. There's some. There, there's basic. You could do rules. like let's go, Bo. Let's go, Bo. No, no, you can't. Try and do it. Like let's go, Bo. Let's go, Bo. Something like that. that that's, that's that's you know what? That's, that's weak, man. Yeah, no, that's say so it weak. Loud. Well, I mean, it's better than just saying it. No, you know what? The it's, Horvat thing's not horrible. Horvat is, yeah. And I'm not talking about the player. I'm talking about the chant. It's a weak chant. Like, it's not a great chant. And again, I, 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 I don't want to say this because I'm just crapping on it without having a better solution. Yep. I can't think of a better solution. The thing that I do know is that there are some basic rules with chants, right? You can either have two syllables ending with the e sound right right or you can have a long like you could go bo but even then that mm. sucks but like lou for example lou worked here um what is it markstrom when he was here marky uh hell even martin you can do the um the wwe one fans have done once in a while here i heard heard some people doing it the spencer martin and then you do that you know, yeah. like those are your basic rules that you're working within some confines. And I, I can't think of anything for Bo because his first name is one syllable. Yeah, it's one syllable. Yeah, You could do Bowie Horvat because he's named after David Bowie. His first mm. name's Bowie. Someone tell the Islanders fans they could do Bowie well, Horvat. They're working on it. I tell you, I'm just, just happy for them. They gave him a good, uh, you know, show. No, your last name. Yeah, I'm a little more too. concerned about this than I know what I'm. Well, are. here's what I'm concerned about. I, I think this would be hilarious. I don't think it's going to happen. We got the goal here up now on YouTube. Yep, with uh, or about yeah, nice shot, top corner. What it's the same thing he's been doing all year. I think um, this is what I'm. This is what I question about chance and all this stuff you're talking about. I think it'd be hilarious, and I don't think it'll happen. But it would be very funny if Al Murdoch, the PR announcer for <laughs> what do you or PA announcer, if he does Anthony Beauvillier as the same way he did Bo. Horvat, if he did that with Beauvillier, that would be hilarious. I don't think he's going to, he's but he might. He's a professional. Might. Yeah, but he Al's might. Al's doing all-star games. He's one of the oh, best he's, he's in the, the best. league. He's the best PA in the league. So you think he's going to do this? He might. Why? He did it with Bo Horvat. Because <laughs> it worked. I think it'd be hilarious if he does Beauvillier like that. Yeah, why don't we assign one to Dakota Joshua while we're at it? What, no, like middle six wingers is what I'm saying. Oh goodness gracious! Yeah, it's your on. captain. Of course he's gonna get his. Anyways, but it's just it's the way you, it's a little different. Yeah, uh, we're not gonna spend too too much time talking about this. Canucks are in New York to face the Rangers tonight. Yeah, the five bigger, p.m. tonight. The bigger game is obviously tomorrow. We'll break Who, down tomorrow's game. Tonight? Uh, Spencer Martin is starting. Uh, Rick Tockett talked about it, and he said, "I love saying Tockett talked or talks." Mm -hmm. uh, Tockett was talking about how he has talks with Ian Clark about who should start net. Uh, and he's kind of relying on Ian Clark right now. So this is an Ian Clark decision to put Spencer Martin uh, back in goal. Tomorrow's going to be at, the fun day. Yeah, puck Sorry. drop is at 5 o'clock tonight. We'll be breaking it down tomorrow. But as you just alluded to, tomorrow is the big game. Tomorrow is a quick turnaround for the Canucks to face Bo Horvat uh, in his first game against his former team. Uh, it will be very interesting to see. And we'll talk about it more tomorrow. Talk it, talk today about uh, managing emotions and the talks that talk it is having with his team, um, you know, about what they're going to say and talk to Bo Horvat. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. But yeah, tonight, uh, Rangers tomorrow, Islanders, Islanders is the big one. Again, talk about it tomorrow. That way. No, not yet. I got one highlight to get to. I don't know. I just tweeted this out before the show here. You got to see this. This goal from Yanni Yermo, uh, prospect who's playing in the Finnish Liga. 
this is this is gorgeous. This is a gorgeous. I'm gonna make sure the sound's not on here because you got this guy yelling in Finnish over here. But this goal right here, oh, I tell you, he picks it up in his own zone. This is overtime, so a little three on three action here. Yermo gets a full head of uh, steam. Is that what they call it? Yeah. And then he goes right in here, backhand to the forehand, beats the goalie for an overtime winner. I'll tell you what. He's pissed he wasn't. He didn't make the top 10 prospect I was going to say, you don't see Philip Johansson doing that, do you? Oh, good, good yeah, you point. put him at number eight and keep Yermo off the list. I th- I, I genuinely think Yermo yeah, should be on your yeah, list. Yeah, if Yermo is right-handed, he's like number one. So, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's the, the boost you get from being a right-handed defenseman. Okay. But, that way. Uh, you see who that is behind the bench? I didn't. You didn't see it behind the bench here. No. Recognize that face, don't you? No, you don't. You might not even know who that is, Quads. No, I don't. You don't know Ole Jokinen. Oh, I do. Wow, he looks different. Yeah, he's a coach now, man. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Okay. He's a coach, and you know who played with uh, Yermo last year? Atu Ratu. Same, uh, same Liga team last yes, year. Yes, they're very good friends. Yeah, they're good buds. Yeah. I've, seen, I've seen today, too, uh, Atu Ratu. Posting a, uh, a a video of his golf swing, oh, clean, a very clean, clean swing, wow. a very clean golf swing. So he'll fit right in with the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, lots of golfing at the Jake. Okay, yeah. uh, Betway, let's go. Yep, Betway, pull it up. We got. Uh, you know what? I think I have the same bet that I just run now because it, it's it's one that I'd like for the the you it hits and it gives you decent odds. So minus one fifty for J T Miller or Andre Kuzmenko to score because you're getting you know, two of the top scores on two of the top lines. Like, you, you know, obviously Pedersen's going to score more than than these two, probably both. But you get the odds here at minus 150. Miller or Kuzmenko to score a goal. Uh, $10 is going to return you 1666 on Betway. It's the devil's bet right there, 1666. Uh, but uh, $10 will return you that, minus 150. Miller or Kuzmenko to score a goal. And then the second one, because I've been I've been hitting a lot of the – the Canucks always hit the over. Right, but it's like they win or they lose, and I have not been picking them right. So I took off the deciding who's going to win in this one. Uh, over six point five total goals between the two teams, and JT Miller to score two or more points plus three thirty three. Ten dollar bet return you uh, forty three thirty three. So that's uh, that's a nice little return there, and that this, this feels very possible. Right, two point nine from JT Miller, not super rare. Over six point five total goals of the Canucks happens every freaking night so yeah feeling good about that one the all right that way there uh if you choose to play uh please be 19 plus play responsibly i'm wondering if we got because i had a jam-packed uh a jam-packed work here before the show i spent this for the hour right before the show going on the wakes for kids you gotta get the wakes for kids. yes wakes for kids almost forgot it Thank uh, you. That's get, it let's get it in uh get it up alex we got a video here oh, of yeah. our pal uh joey this Pitt. is out at montana's yesterday yep as we said uh, he came out, look met at us at Montana's. Hair. Look at this hair flip. Uh, as I read this ad, this read. isn't a good look for me though. This is uh, my fiance asked me if I went eight right after this. I said, "Yep, I did." Your your grand idea oh. was for both of us to get hit in the head by Joey's hair. Jeez, and I look at that. I kindly took it there. declined. You were like, "No, we'll both do it." I said, "Yeah, no, it's okay. You go ahead." No, oh, that thing. Yeah, that. I'm standing a no safe joke. distance away. It's- okay, let me get this in. Let me get this in. The BCHL Surrey Eagles are proud to be partnered with Wigs for Kids BC and the BC Children's Hospital Foundation. Wigs for Kids BC provides funding to cover the cost of custom-made human hair wigs for children and teens at BC Children's Hospital who have suffered hair loss due to cancer treatment or other serious illnesses donations to wigs for kids bc also help families pay for medications and feeding supplies that are essential for treatments not covered by their medical plan when a child has an illness like this it takes an enormous toll on a family both emotionally and financially uh wigs for kids bc provides tons of assistance to these families and makes the burden on them a little lighter so that they can focus more of their time and energy on caring for their sick child. The Eagles play-by-play broadcaster, as there you see is. there, our pal Joey Pitt, who's got Ooh. one heck of a head of hair, is trying to raise $15,000 for Wigs for Kids this year, culminating in him shaving his head at the end of the season and donating it to be made into a wig for a lucky kid in the province. We talked to Joey about this yesterday. Look at the lucky kid. I t- look at the flow, man. The the bounce in those time, curls. That's what they say with the hair like that. The bounce. Time is running out to donate. Uh, Joey told us we got we to gotta push this. Please yeah. donate, folks. Uh, we got to the end of March. That's when the BCHL hockey season ends. Uh, so we got we to gotta ramp up the efforts here. Yep. Um, we'll be making a donation ourselves, but we need, uh, we need our listeners 
to uh, come come out big here. Link uh, in description of the yeah. YouTube video for that, and we'll we'll, t- we'll tweet about this uh, here soon too. Yeah, that is wigs. I think for you can kids. get the video down now, Alex. It looks like jeez, <laughs> Louise. I look like a, a teenage mutant ninja turtle. I got the body shape of a ninja turtle. All right, wigs for kids, BC. We'll wrap it up there. For my co-host Chris Faber, our technical producer, That's Alex, enough there, Alex, he's having too much. I knew I should. Uh, this video, Alex has got it. Sees it's, it's his background. It it's going to be your probably green screen on the next episode. Oh, my name is David Quadrelli. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Canucks Conversation. Yep, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Thanks for listening to Canucks Conversation. Hit the subscribe button to never miss an episode. How about keep it to a thank you, Jim?